It's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. Today is March the 29th, Tuesday, and I have a dentist appointment. Yes, um, some of y'all have told me about uh, my tooth, and, and I'm sure this doctor, he is a surgeon, will have some uh, alternatives for me. Um, and so I'm looking forward to going to see him today. I'm actually thinking about having a partial made. That way he can pull the tooth um, and see what he thinks. Now, I have something to show you guys. I got an email from a local viewer. She lives in St. Mary's. And she said, I've been going through my dad's stuff. And he was military. And he has a couple of old cookbooks. And none of my kids want them. Would you be interested in them? And I said, absolutely. So me and Chris went over to our local diner. It's called, um, Lord, I can't even think of the name of it now. Well, for heaven's sakes, let me look it up. Local diner in Kingsland. Stephens is what it's called. Stephens. It's a local diner. They still have the, um, sorry, they still have the soda pop fountain and the bar and the little round stools. And it's just an old diner and it's been there for a long time. Let's see how long it actually has been there. Uh, we'll click on it and see. They do have a website. What about that? And you can order online. They are with it. I thought they would have some information on their history on here. Let's see. Aw. They have gift cards. They're hiring. Their location and contact. Our kitchen. Let's see what it says. No. Oh, well, they don't tell you the history of it. I know it's been around for a long time. So I thought I'd be able to just click on there and tell you they need to put their history. It's been, it says since 1948. So they have home cooking. Now, I'll be honest with you. Some of the stuff I like and some of the stuff I don't like because they do cook different than me. Um, and some of, I love their breakfast. I love their fried shrimp. But like last night, I decided I would get vegetable soup and cornbread. Now, their cornbread is sweet, which I don't mind eating with a meal. Uh, but I didn't grow up on sweet cornbread. So their cornbread is yellow cornmeal with a lot of sugar in it. And um, they um, their vegetable soup last night had sugar in it. I know it had to because it was sweet without the cornbread. And so when I eat vegetable soup and cornbread, I like a buttermilk cornbread, no sugar. And I like soup that is not sweet. I mean, the tomatoes to me are sweet enough. It don't need any added sugar. I don't even like to put sweet corn in it. So I wasn't real satisfied with their soup. But like I said, they have a lot of other things. And they have just gotten in, if you're local and you haven't been there in a while, they've just gotten in a dessert counter where their um, register used to be. They now have a lady making homemade cakes and they're selling homemade desserts um, out of that counter, which is a really good plus for them, I think, because me and Chris are dessert nuts. So that's some good news about that place. But anyway, we went to eat there last night. And when we left, we went over by uh, this viewer's home. And I won't mention her name. Um, but she gave me this cookbook right here. And it is called The San Francisco Examiner, Prudence Penny Binding of the United States Regional Cookbook. And um, it's old. It's taped together. And it says, when you open it up, it was published by the Culinary Arts Institute of Chicago, and it's dated 1947. Um, it says that it was 
copyrighted all the way back to 39 and then 40. And I guess this is the 19, 1939 and 1940. And this is the 1947 edition. What's cool about it is it has tabs in it. See the tabs? And the tabs are the different regions in the United States. So they have a cosmopolitan American, a Western pioneer modern recipes, Southwestern Spanish American, Minnesota Scandinavian, Wisconsin Dutch, Dairy Land of Lakes, it says, Mississippi Valley, Cookbook of Miss Western, Midwestern Recipes, Mich Michigan Dutch, Creole, Pennsylvania Dutch, Southern, and New England. So, buddy, I got a really good book. I'm excited. Um, I have been cooking out of this one, and I am going to make a recipe for Easter out of this one. I wanted to get these appointments out of the way before I started it because it is going to be Parker House Rolls. And this was my 19, um, and it's a 1947 cookbook. They must have been busy in 1947. But see, this one's falling apart. I really need to get it fixed. Um, so I might look into doing that. But anyway, there's a recipe in here for Parker House Rolls, and I want to do that. For Easter. Um, and this one, I believe, is a 1947 cookbook as well. I can look and make sure, but I'm pretty sure it is. Oh, it's a 1927. Okay, 1927. So anyway, she gave me that cookbook, and she gave me another cookbook. And this one is a family circle cookbook. I mean, it's obvious they use these cookbooks because the binders are worn out in them. And this one, let's see, the Family Circle Incorporated, New York, is dated 1974. So I got two cookbooks. I'm actually going to take this one with me today while I wait in the dentist office and thumb through it and take some tabs with me. Um, anyway, I was super excited to meet her, talk to her, get the cookbooks. It was exciting. And so that was my day late yesterday. I also was very disappointed when I looked out the window yesterday or out the front door and a doggone squirrel had actually gotten up to my birdhouses. I mean, my bird feeders. With, and they have those cones on the bottom of them. And he still got up there. So I filled up the bird feeders this morning. I sprayed them all for now because I didn't have time to do shortening because I have so much going on. I sprayed them all with uh, canola oil spray because I don't like canola oil. I thought, well, I got this old canola oil spray. I'll use it. And filled up the birdhouses. And guess what? Chris hung some of my stuff out back with my pulleys. Yes, he did. He was very nervous. He was afraid he was going to get hurt. And he said, I can't believe I'm doing this for you. And I could fall over a bird feeder. And I said, well, you don't have to do it. I can climb up there. And he goes, I know you'd get hurt. So anyway, he hung three of them yesterday. So I'll have to take y'all outside to take a look at those. And he sat on the back porch while I was editing the video that I posted yesterday. He sat on the back porch. And as soon as he... One of them is a hummingbird feeder. We hung it. I said, I want the hummingbird feeder over here under these branches because I think the hummingbirds would like it there. And so he hung it up. And from the time he hung it up until the time he came back in the house, he said he's seen at least seven times that hummingbirds came to it. They started going to it immediately. Um, and so we're excited about that. So thank you, Larry Satchel, for your great idea on hanging those um, in the trees for us. And he got through it and didn't get hurt. Praise the Lord, right? We are going to have a wonderful Bible study today. And I hope you stay with us to uh, be a part of that. And um, I have to drive to Jacksonville, Florida today. Uh, Jacksonville is about an hour from me. 
and I'm going to be on the beach side. Jarek and Adonix is where I'm going, and it's right, very close to Jacksonville Beach. Now, I've never been to Jacksonville Beach. It is next to Jacksonville Beach and the Ponte Vedera. Vedra Beach, Neptune Beach. So if any reason you are local to that area and you want to meet up with me uh, because I don't have plans after I leave the dentist office and I don't think he's going to keep me long because this is an infection and he's going to have to treat the infection. So if you are local to that area, and you want to meet up with me and maybe have lunch today. It'll be a late lunch because my appointment's at 1215. If you will send me an email to Tammy at CollardValleyCooks.com. That's CollardValleyCooks with an S dot com. Um, I will respond and give you my phone number and we'll try to meet up today uh, somewhere around that area. And that's pretty much it. I would love to meet up with uh a viewer while I'm down there, if you are um, in that area. Now, if not, then I'll just go shopping because it's really close to a mall. I mean, my eye itches. A lot of y'all liked my polka dotted shirt the other day, so I thought I would wear this one. This one's super cute. I got it at Belk. I got it marked down. I buy everything marked down. Um, it's kind of tight, a little bit tight where my stomach is. See? But it looks okay with my jeans on. So, isn't it cute? I love the sleeves. Aren't they just darling? Cute, cute, cute. When I saw it, I was like, oh my gosh, that is super cute. I've got to get it because I love polka dots. So, all I got left to do is put my earrings on and then I can head down to Jacksonville. Um, once we finish Bible study this morning, I do need to put some stuff in the mailbox. So, okay. Enough about that. Let's start Bible study. All right. So today we are in, let me grab my Bible. We are in Hebrews. I always say Hebrew and Chris is like, but Tammy, just say Hebrews like you're supposed to. I'm like, okay. Um, and this is in chapter five, Hebrews chapter five. And we are going to talk about Christ as a high priest. We're going to talk about today how he suffered and how we shouldn't think because we're Christians that we shouldn't suffer. Because so many of us think that the Lord shouldn't make us suffer or why are we going through this and why do we have to go through this and uh, am I being punished, etc.? And so this, if you are there or you're going, if you're going through something in your life and you're just like, this is crazy. I don't understand why in the world are you putting me through this? This is for you. All right. Um, this is Hebrews chapter five. And I'm going to read. All the way from one to ten. Why? Because you need to know what's happening here so that you understand what Bible study is about today. It says, for every high priest taken from among men is appointed in matters pertaining to God for the people to offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. Y'all, I'm sorry, but these glasses, I know y'all like them, but can I say there's something about these glasses and I'm not kidding, that my hair gets in between and in, in front of my face, little twigs of my hair and tickles my face. My other glasses never do that. And as much as I like these glasses, it drives me crazy. And I'm constantly trying to get something off the front of my face. Sorry. Let's start over. For every high priest taken from among men is appointed in matters pertaining to God for the people to offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. Now, this is talking about before Christ, we had priests that would offer sacrifices for our sin. 
And it says he is able to deal gently with those who are ignorant and are going astray because he's also clothed with weakness. Because of this, he must make an offering for his own people. Oh, I'm sorry. Before he makes the offerings for his people, he also has to make an offering for his own sin. As well as for the people. No one takes this honor on himself. Instead, a person is called by God, just as Aaron was. In the same way, Christ did not exalt himself to become a high priest, but God who said to him, you are my son. Today I have become your father. Also says in another place, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek. I didn't do pronunciation on that one. Okay, it says during his early life, Christ offered prayers and appeals with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. Although he was the son, he learned obedience from what he suffered. After he was perfected, he became the source of eternal salvation for all, all who obey him. And he was declared by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. So this shows you that... In the past, there were high priests and God, anoint, God anointed them and, and they were called by God, okay? And the same thing happened when Christ became our high priest, okay? So I thought that would put us in perspective for our Bible study today. And we're going to hop on over there and start our reading for today. And now you'll understand it a little bit, okay, better. Um, so our verse for the day was verse 8. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. Okay, it says we are told that the captain of our salvation was made perfect through suffering. He was made perfect through suffering. Therefore, we who are sinful and who are far from being perfect must not wonder if we are called to pass through suffering too. Should the head be the crown? Sh shall the head be crowned with thorns? And shall the other members of the body be rocked upon the dainty lap of ease? So he's saying, why should Christ be crowned with thorns? And we expect to be rocked upon the lap with a dainty ease in our life. Why do we feel that way? Why do we think that way? It says, must Christ pass through seas of his own blood to win the crown? And we are to walk to heaven water, in waterproof and silver slippers. No, our master's experience teaches us that suffering is necessary. And the true born child of God must not, would not escape if he might. But there's one comforting thought in the fact of Christ's being made perfect through suffering. It is that we, I mean, I'm sorry, it is that he can have complete sympathy with us. So one, one thing that is a blessing to know is that because Christ suffered and was made perfect through suffering, he can have sympathy for our suffering. Okay? He is not a high priest that cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. In this compassion of Christ, we find a nurturing power. One of the early martyrs said, I can bear it all for Jesus suffered. And he suffers in me now. He sympathizes with me. And this makes me strong. Believer, lay hold of this thought in all times of agony. 
Let the thought of Jesus strengthen you as you follow in his steps. Find a sweet support in his compassion. And remember that to suffer is an honorable thing. To suffer for Christ is glory. The apostles rejoiced that they were counted worthy to do this. So far, the Lord shall give us grace to suffer for Christ, to suffer with Christ. And so far, he honors us. The jewels of a Christian are his afflictions. You ever think about that? That your afflictions as a Christian are your jewels. These symbols of office for kings whom God has anointed are their troubles, their sorrows, and griefs. So he's saying that the kings whom God anointed had symbols of their office, which were troubles, sorrows, and griefs. We, as Christians, should see our afflictions as jewels. Just as if we were a king. Okay? Let us not therefore shun being honored. Let us not turn aside from being exalted. Griefs exalt us. And troubles lift us up. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. Now, he's not just talking about suffering for Christ. He's talking about suffering in general. If you're a Christian and you suffer, count it as jewels. Okay? Count it as God exalting you. I mean, we grow through suffering. And just as, let me go back up here. He learned obedience through his suffering, Christ. We too will learn obedience through suffering as Christians. So count it as blessings because if the Lord didn't have us suffer we would be up on a pedestal prideful we probably wouldn't be humbled we wouldn't feel the need for Christ and God as much I know that's true before I got cancer before I was really faced with death I was very close to the Lord, and I loved the Lord. But through the suffering, I know I gained faith, and I was blessed. So no matter what you're going through, no matter how hard it seems, remember that he's molding you and shaping you into the Christian that you will become through these sufferings. And it's very much a blessing. It's hard to understand it. and It's hard to see it when you're going through it. And I know I was just looking this morning at the cancer journals and the people that I have sent them to lately. And I was thinking about them. And I know that um, it's really hard for them right now going through uh, this time in their life, not knowing for sure if they'll be healed and get better. Um, but God knows and God has you in his hands. And, you know, we are just to trust him and have faith and know that he's molding you into a Christian that you would have never become had it not been through the suffering. I used to think as a cancer survivor, 
I really did, that I was special. You know, a lot of people say, why me, Lord? Why me, Lord? And really, we should say, why not me, Lord? Right? I read a book, and I was trying to find it the other day, that I, that was such a blessing to me when I had cancer. And that was one of the things he said. Why should we say, why not? Why me? Why shouldn't we say, why not me? And um, it really helped me. I hope today's Bible study has helped you. I just want y'all to know it is so hard for me to call each of you out by name to the Lord. But the Holy Spirit knows that you're in my heart. And um, I do pray for you. And I depend on the Holy Spirit to help me. And, and I know Jesus knows you by name. And when he goes to the Father on my behalf to pray for you, he calls you by your name. I may not know your name, and I may not remember everybody by name, but you know what? Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, he knows everybody by name. All right? Um, I just thank you for watching Real Southern Woman, and we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. And um, if you are local to the Jacksonville area, make sure you send me a message. And if I have more than one, we'll try to just meet up together. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your love. We thank you for um, providing Jesus as a sacrifice for our sin. We thank you um, that through his sufferings, He gave his life for us. And through those sufferings, he showed his obedience to you. May we, too, as we are here on this earth, before we get to be with you in heaven, may we, when we suffer, be obedient as Christ was. And trust you as Christ did. And know that you're molding us for something special. May we not be angry and mad because we're going through these things in our life. May we trust you and accept your will and the things in our life. Be with all of the listeners today. I pray that you would touch each and every one of them. I pray that Jesus would call each and every one of their names to you so that you could bless each one. We thank you for your word. We thank you for this platform that we can get together and call upon you and learn about you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Y'all have a wonderful and blessed Tuesday. And I will see you in the morning on Real Southern Woman, Lord willing. See you then. Love ya. Bye.